Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today is March 21st, 2014. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Welcome. I hope you brought a project. We're going to sew and we're going to reveal the mystery quilt. So this is week five. Can you believe we started just one month ago on February 21st? Now March 21st we have the final instructions. So for everyone who has been making the quilt. I can't wait to see your colors. I hope you downloaded clue number five from the Simply Colorful website. Tonight what we're going to do is make the three squares that make up the quilt. And behind me is the spring mystery quilt put together almost. It's put together, it's not completely quilted, and the binding is on but it hasn't been hand sewn to the back. But it's partially quilted and it is safety pinned all over the place. So you can see what it looks like. I can't wait to tell you about all of the iterations the quilt went through over the last month. It, I, I learned so much each week. Uh, I have to admit that it was not designed when we started the mystery. So I designed it as we went. And then after each clue, I was more constrained in what it could look like because you all were working on that clue. So well, and I'll talk about areas where I might have done it differently. And next time, you know, we'll have, maybe I'll make it further ahead of time and, and play with it a bit. So anyway, let's get sewing. I hope you all have your things in front of you. The purpose of this is just to see what we can get done in 60 minutes. We can get a lot done. So call me. Well, don't call me. No. Send me email, lmarquadon at gmail.com, or post on Google, or post on Facebook and let's have some fun. What I thought we'd do tonight is put together the three different units. The star block, the neutral oval block, and then the small pieces block. And you saw on, on this one, we need to make 16 of the star block, 15 of the neutral oval, and 32 of the small block pieces. But this is the fun part. This is where it all comes together. So let's make the oval first. That one's pretty pretty simple and I'm going to lay it out here. I'm trying a little bit of a different camera angle. Let me know if it's working or not. But I think maybe you'll be able to see more of the patches. So this is just literally totally random neutrals. I hope, I hope you're having fun putting it all together see what it emerges as. You can always um, change it up. If, if you want to change things, go for it. I mean, it's your quilt. I mean, just, it's just been so fun to make it and have folks make it along with me. So here's the first oval. We have the nine patches. I'm going to web it together. And this same process, we've done it before, but this same technique you're going to do once you create all 63 of these nine patches when you put it together. I webbed this one behind me, and it it's just like built-in pinning. It, it just saved so much time. So what I mean by webbing is now that I have my nine patches out, I'm literally going to sew the first two rows down, and I'm not going to cut them apart. So once we get started, then I have lots of other updates and hope you all are having a good week. Happy spring. I thought it was fitting yesterday as um, I was writing that final clue that it was in fact spring right after noon and it finally had, we've had some sunshine here. We've had we've sprung ahead for daylight saving, so it's it's light enough to walk. And where's my leader ender here? It's time to get serious about a new leader ender and a new project. Sometimes that's my favorite part of finishing a quilt is the dreaming about what's next. Can you believe that? But I won't talk about that yet. Okay, so those are 
the first set of two, four, six patches, right? And I kept them together, so they're webbed. Now I'm going to just sew the next three to these two patches and further web it together. Remember I got my Bernina cleaned last week? The technician said that I didn't have a Bernina. Um, now watch, I'm going to talk. Hang on, hang on before I talk. Let me get this right. I didn't have the right bobbin in. I had a Singer 15 bobbin in. So I went back and I found my, my Bernina bobbins, and it, it does work better. Though it rattles a little bit. She's all ready for the retreat next week. Hello to folks out there who are going on the retreat. I hope you started packing. I've, I've started packing in my head. I haven't, haven't actually done anything. I have to do some laundry first. So there's our web of the nine pieces. And now literally I'm just going to sew it the other way. And I don't iron it so that I can ease it in. And you've seen me do this over the last few weeks. But, you know, that's what quilting is. Quilting is repetition. And there's something very soothing in that. And believe me, I understand that, that some people don't find meditation in it or, or find the soothing effect. But those of us who do, um, it is what it is. So embrace it. Boy, I tell you, once you get a certain color in your stash, like this green, I don't think it's ever going to go away. <laughs> oh. This, these leader enders, it's just amazing how they add up. And I know I've said that before, too. So now I've got those six patches sewn together. And again, these are like built-in pins. One thing, I tend to iron my seams flat and over to one side on the back. So I alternate. So for example, this one on the bottom, the seam was facing this way. So on the top, I'm having the seam face the other way. And there are far more disciplined quilters out there who rotate their seams and everything. And I, I must admit, I'm not there yet. But you can tell in people's piecing who really do pay attention to which way the seams go. It just makes for a much flatter finished product and that much crisper. Do another leader ender. So what are you all working on? I saw a, a quick snapshot, Jean, of her colors. She's doing 30s colors. Beautiful. I can't wait to see that done up. So there's the first one. Now remember, your greens are alternating and your purples are alternating. And the reason for that is when you go to fit it in the quilt, you're going to match up the green with your green and your your purple with your purple X. So there's that. Actually, let's iron it. Now the quilt goes really fast. You guys must have thought, what are we doing with all of these one-inch squares several weeks ago, but you, you hung in there. Oh, and I, I actually, another reason why this quilt isn't completely done 
is I didn't have the right color thread. So I ordered some superior King Tut alabaster color. And I actually got 2,000 yards because it, it's a color that I'm sure I will use on my neutrals. So I'm just pressing it again. This is where I say I love to iron. Because I do, I love to iron. And there's one of the 63. We need 15 of these. So there's one down. Let's see. Let's make the star. These are leftovers. We'll play with those a little bit later. Let's lay out the star. Let's see who's who's online tonight. We had so many people online last week. It was such fun. In fact, I was thinking this morning, Becca, I did not get back to you. Becca had a wonderful idea that I want to make sure I post for all of you to see where she is using the AccuQuilt Go and the tumbler block and she's actually using strip piecing to create her fabric and then she's using the tumbler block to cut it out. It's, it, it's making some really unique looks. Okay. So Sandra, hi Sandra. I saw your note from this morning. Sandra was had to go out. Oh, love, love, love it. As you remember, Sandra is doing her pinks with her blacks and her whites. Look at this star. Beautiful work. Thanks, Sandra. Sheila. Sheila writes in from Tennessee. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I hope you have a project and I hope you're doing something. Let us know, or not, or just enjoy your Friday night. I tell you, some Friday night, not in the not too distant future, you're going to tune in, and I may be just sitting here with a glass of wine, because it is Friday night. But it's not highly likely, but believe me, some Friday nights you, you want to do that. So do whatever you're doing on a Friday night. Thanks for joining, that's all. My messages, just for those of you who send messages, have been quirky. I haven't been able to send them. But here is Jean. This is what she sent this afternoon, and I just love this. These are her 30s fabrics. And she's done one of each. She's probably done many more by now, knowing Jean. But isn't that fun? So. Here's a little bit of background. Well, let's let's do the star one. While we do the star, I'll tell you about the star. Originally, or in one iteration of this, there was a star in every single square. And I thought that was just a little too busy. It's still a busy quilt. I, there's no doubt about it. So then that's where the every other placement came in. Go. There we go. Oh, this is working very well. Hopefully you can see that, the star. So now, I'm just going to web it together. You'll 
see, I don't know if you do this too, but I use my fingernails to move the fabric a little bit. You know, just to get it, not every square, for me anyway, is going to be perfect. So what I try to do is place it where, where it's aligning up the best on all four angles. Have you all been watching the other open sew groups, the Friendship Quilting and the Quiltville Open Studio? There are some just very talented quilters out there posting pictures that are so inspiring. I'm having fun with that. In fact, part of me was wondering if we even needed our own open group. Why don't we just go post it there? But do whatever you want to do. Okay, so two, four, six are webbed together. Now I'm going to web those. my leader enders. Just open this up. See that? Now we're ready to sew our star together. So since I've seen you, did I tell everyone I went to New Hampshire and Connecticut? That was, I bet I didn't. That wasn't this week, it was last week, and now I have to go to D.C. on Monday. It's just a one-day trip down and back, so it shouldn't be that hard. Jet blue, here we come. I must say, I don't have a traveling project right now. I went to visit my mother. My husband and I went to visit her last weekend, and she's working on the prettiest pair of mittens. It's, um, I guess it's in Tarja. It's two colors, very intricate, um, like the Norwegian mittens. She had a cute pattern for an owl. Owl mittens, literally owl on the back, and then when you turned it over, there were owls on each of the thumbs. Very cute. My mother's made that kind, those kind of mittens ever since I can remember. In fact, I remember she she does them for um, oh some of the fundraisers like Windermere and others. And you'd be surprised at the, the number of people who bid on them. They're very pretty. In fact, I think I posted a picture of them on the Simply Colorful website, just because I didn't have anywhere else to put them. You know, in fact, I have probably 10 years worth of things that I've made that I haven't chronicled or kept anywhere. I probably took pictures here and there on my phone, but I don't know what's happened to it. So that's why there is a one page on my site, and I could hide it probably, but it's just meant I'm using it as an archive. 
so that at least I have those somewhere. My father was a bird carver, and I have literally a file with pictures of his carvings. Oh, and I've run out of thread. And boy, do I prize that file. I have backup copies, and I have, I don't know. But it's not like having a, a, a hard copy photo book, you know? Thing is, he sold a lot of his carvings, so I don't know where they ended up. It'd be a cool thought if they, you know, in today's day and age, if you could somehow put a chip in them and know where they all ended up. That would be fun. Or not. I'm using up my thread so I can get my Oracle. So when I went to see my mom, wait a minute. Making a lot of noise. There we go. I came away from visiting with some treasures. And I have them over here. I'm going to show them to you. Some was some flag fabric that I guess I had brought down in the 90s. And it has been given back. And it's been washed already and it's ready to go. I didn't clean under the face plate because I just cleaned it the last time. Probably should give it a good. So I hope that these Friday nights are allowing you, well, first off, entertaining, and also just giving you something to quilt to. That's the whole goal, is just to, to get some of our UFOs done and inspire each other to make new things, which brings us to Raggedy Ann. I have heard from several of you a desire to make a Raggedy Ann, so that's what we're going to do next. And when I was down visiting my mother, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just had to show you, she found my Raggedy Ann that she made for me, and the original pattern here that we're going to use to make to make another one for the next generation. Do you recognize this one? It's probably from the 60s. And I know a few of you, Sarah in particular, have gone online and have found some patterns. Um, this one comes in three sizes, 15, 20, and 25. I figure for one, one Friday night, we'll We'll make one of these. In fact, I'd love to have Sarah over here and do it with us. The question is whether you, a Raggedy Ann or a Raggedy Andy, or both. Anyway, she used to have a felt nose, but that wore off, just like a lot of those that we saw during the presentation. Oh, 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 and, oh, and my mother said she tea dyed the fabric. you see that? 
she embroidered I Love You. So, needless to say, it brings back memories. I don't know if you all have any old dolls. She, she says I didn't drag it around with me, but it was always around in my room somewhere. Anyway, okay. So that's Raggedy Ann. Be thinking about whether you want to make one. Look for a pattern. I frankly don't know the rules. Like, is she so... She'll be 100 next year. So does that mean that any of us can use any patterns? Is it patented? I don't know. Okay, let's iron this. So we are cruising. Another thing I would have done differently if I could do this quilt over is I wouldn't choose yellow or I, or I would have added a fourth color. Um, and you might ask why. The two reasons for that, and I probably would do two. I, if I chose yellow, because it was on my backing, if you'll remember my backing, I don't know if you can see this. You see that backing? Not really. Okay. Well, I posted it online. It had yellow in it, definitely. So I probably, again, would do yellow, but I'd do it in a really intense hue. None of the light ones that even come close to looking like a background or a neutral. So I really broke my rule there. I have way too many very light yellows, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have made them really vivid. Secondly, I probably would have add, added a fourth color. So see how the yellow inside the stars competes a bit with the yellow in these purple stripes. If this yellow had been a different color, the flowers, the yellow of the stars would have popped even more. Right now your eye kind of goes from that yellow to that yellow to that yellow. So it's not as clean as I would like it. Next time we'll fix that. So thanks for coming along on this journey, this first journey. As I say, I learned a lot. Next time I'll try to do it further ahead so I can make those minor tweaks. Um, you guys are troopers. I can't tell you how much fun I have had just planning this every week, doing it with you. Um, I can tell you this, Deb, if you're out there, I definitely would not have done this in five weeks without you all. So this is very much thank you for for getting me moving. Okay, so now I'm doing the final one, the little itty bitty square one. Do you remember how important it was to put the yellow angle on these and the green angle going the same way? It's because you want it to look like that rotating star. So thank you for paying attention to that. There were many iterations of that. Oh, no, that's right. Okay. And there we go. So it's wonderful to hear we have folks from Tennessee this week. What's going on down there? Isn't that where, has Bonnie Hunter been down there? There's been a big show, I believe. This angle is working really good, I can tell. I can see all the pieces. Okay. 
So what are we going to work on next? I have I mention this every time. I have a couple of baby quilts. I have a Clemson quilt. I need to get get working on. And that's what we're going to do at the retreat next week. I hope you can see how fast these nine patches go together. You can go into a rhythm and they're so satisfying. And then once your nine patches are done, you can web it together in a couple of hours. So, we have it webbed, we're going to put it together. You know, something I became better at the longer I made these little patches was making sure I had enough contrast. And that's really not too good an example. But I really wanted these diagonals to really pop. And probably if I were to do it again, and I am going to do another one, I would make them all the same value. So see how that's a lighter pink? I might keep them all the lighter pink and then keep all the green, maybe this darker green, so the lighter pink would just pop. But it's scrappy. Do one more leader and then we'll see who's out there. Hmm. Yeah, my messages still aren't working. So, Gene, I apologize. I, I tried to send you a message back. Somehow it's not working. My bars are coming in. Oh, Marque! Oh, hello, Marque. I'm glad you're with us. Earlier, hopefully you were home from work earlier this time. She says, I'm watching and enjoying. Still sewing on the Scrappy Star. Got to get this one finished before I start yours. I completely understand. I love your quilt and the colors you've chosen. Very, very pretty. Thank you. Thanks. Now you're making the one from, yeah, the Scrappy Star. The Dahlia, maybe? Dahlia Star? Send us an update of that when, you, when you're ready. Only when you're ready. I'm so glad you're on. Sheila, hi. Oh, you, Sheila's watched since block one. I look so forward to being able to seeing and being a part of this group on Friday nights. Oh, are we going to keep doing this? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, yes, love your quilt colors, Sheila in Tennessee. Sheila, yes. I want to continue if you want to continue. I, it's just fun. So, um, yes, we're going to do it. It's something I look forward to all week. Carol's out there. See you, she says. Okay, let's see. Oh, Gail Wilson. Do you remember Gail Wilson? She shipped another one of my orders for my miniature dolls. 
That means I'll have four backed up. I'm going to have to get working. She doesn't say what it is. It just says my order shipped from Gail Wilson Designs. Maybe it's the bed. Wonderful. We'll keep on sewing. Yes, so to, to follow up, Sheila, here's what I'm thinking is the timing is such that next Friday I'll be in New Hampshire at that quilt retreat. And without promising anything, just between us, I am going to try to have a Friday night fiber cast from up there. I'm told there's internet, but as you know, I tried it down in Florida when I was traveling there and it didn't work so well, so we'll try it. And if we cut out like we did last time, I'll just end it very quickly. And I'll take pictures and videos that I'll post afterwards. And then the following Friday, we'll just be right back here. And that's when we'll do Raggedy. We'll start Raggedy in. And probably only do that for one session. But I'm, you know, this is really just about whatever fiber art people want to do. I'm open. to set my seams before I then sew it open. Linda Grant showed me that years ago. I really like it. Isn't it funny, or not funny, but isn't it very interesting that the, the tips and tricks we learn along the way. It's like we have to be ready to receive I'm sure I have been told the same tips many times in my life, but maybe I wasn't in a need for it. I'm very much a just-in-time learner. I don't know if any of you are, but if I don't need to do it right now, it's not going to be something I retain. But if I need to do something right now, I'll learn how to do it. So anyway, I think it's just interesting how we learn all of these tips. And then there are some people like my friend Sarah who could just go deep on so many crafts. She's just really a, an encyclopedia. It's, it's fun to talk to her about it. Like I say, I'm trying to get her here and we'll, we'll ask her some questions. So that one's pretty. See, and that'll be one of the 32. So we've got one. Two, three. Now, like I say, there were a lot of different iterations, and these are just some of the squares that I cut and played with behind the scenes. So, I mean, at one point, the stars had purple centers. I've had this quilt laid out, as you might imagine, many times. So I thought maybe for the rest of the time, now that we've made the three squares, I thought maybe we'd play with this a little. Um. <laughs> like look at all of these. I still have these. No, you know what? I'm not going to play with that right now. Let's finish up the quilt, the steps of the quilt. I want to describe the borders just to make sure. It's pretty easy, but just to make sure the instructions made sense, then we can play with those. So once you make, make 15 of those, of your oval squares, and then make 16 of your star squares, and then 32 of your tiny small pieces squares. 
and then lay them all out. At that point, you'll still have over or 100 pieces left. And those are going to be your border. You're literally going to put a piece around and, and open it up three inches each side. And what I have suggested is after you lay out your 63 squares, then literally take your 100 extra squares and lay it out around the quilt. And this is where it's kind of, it's fussy laying because you have to make sure that your purple units, your, um, <laughs> maybe it's easier to show here. Just make sure your green and your purple units line up at the end. And it really is like putting a point at the end of the quilt. I like the way it edged. That makes sense. In your corners, you're going to use three. So in two opposite corners, I use three purple half square triangles. In the other two corners, it's three green half square triangles. And then there's a neutral square in the middle. And then what, what you do before you web your, your whole quilt together is sew the borders onto each of these blocks. So in your quarter block, you're literally going to sew on three on one side, then sew four. And so now you end up with a, a block that has four by four. Do that for all four corners. Then on each of your sides, of course, put your three units on the end. So then web it all together. That makes sense? And that is about, once you've got that, iron, now's the time to iron it. Some people starch it, get it nice and flat, as flat as you can. You might even, and I do, is I sew a, a thin, maybe eighth of an inch seam all the way around the edge of it so that it doesn't fray. Just around the edge, just so that it just gives it a little more stability. Then make your sandwich. And for me, I had, my backing was 45 inches wide, so I just sewed two pieces together, and I think I said I had it at least 75 inches by 95 inches, so I gave it a good, I had that much hanging over on each end. Oh, the finished quilt, this one is only 69 by 87, just so everyone knows. If you want it to be the 72 by 90, which I said it would be in the, the real twin size, you can add a one and a half inch border to around the edge. Um, actually cut it one and three fourths, then then ha do your half inch, I mean do your quarter inch seam and then you'll have your half inch on either side. For me, the binding, I wanted it to be a minimalist binding so that the edges of the quilt stood out. So I made a scrappy binding with my neutrals and I'll post that online. I've sewn one side, I need to now hand sew it to the back. And that's it. You can wash it. I usually, I think this one we're going to use, I'm not sure what I'll do, but I usually don't wash it right away until I'm ready to give it to someone or use it. I certainly have been seeing a lot online about washing them, and I, I'm so behind that. I say absolutely wash your quilts, use them, use them up, use them, wear them out. So that is our mystery quilt. Let's see. What else do we have Oh, a few of you asked, how did you design it? And I started out on paper and with PowerPoint, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint, and then I used colored pencils, and I colored in some different designs. And I did more on PowerPoint, and that took a lot of time. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I drew it, you know, on pieces of paper. I can't even see that. Well, oh, and then I color-coded because I kept losing my way. I finally, it was last weekend when I had time away, I heard about electric quilt all these years, and I think, I know I'd even tried it because I have Dear Jane. Anyway, I bought it, and... I learned how to use it this week and I love it. So stay tuned. That final picture in the final clue I actually made with electric quilt. 
And so for any of you who are coming to the retreat, I'm bringing my laptop with, with it on it, and anyone can play with it. And it says I can do that. It says I can bring it to classes. And I'm sure many of you here on, on I'm going to say on the phone, but many have already used it. Um, I think it'll be fun to play with. So that's what I had on the mystery quilt. Again, thank you guys for playing. What else do we have? Oh. These are the flag fabrics, all washed. This is some fabric for our Raggedy Ann, for her legs. Maybe we'll tea dye this muslin for Raggedy Ann. And then just more flag fabric. Maybe we should do a, a scrap swap. Hang on, I just have to pick up one more thing. First time I've done that on, on camera. These I wanted to show you. These were in the pile, I think, that, that I got from my mother's. I bet I cut these out in the 80s using a uh, cardboard template. Aren't they cute? And there are a lot of them, and they're all the same. So I need to find some way to use those. I thought that was just so fun and so precious. I could see a Raggedy Ann doll dress made out of that. So there's that. Um, hmm. For those of you in Boston, the Museum of Fine Arts, the Pilgrim Roy collection is coming to town. Definitely want to check that out. I, I heard of this at Marathon Quilters last week, and I wanted to share it with you all. It starts April 6th, and it goes to July 27th. It's called Quilts and Color, and it celebrates vibrant color palettes and inventive designs of 60 distinctive quilts from the acclaimed Pilgrim Roy collection. Trained as artists, Paul Pilgrim and Gerald Roy built their collection by acquiring quilts with bold, eye-popping designs. The exhibition recognizes the artistic vision of quilt makers and highlights artists who broke with conventional patterns and design. I think that'll be fun. You can even rent the MFA guide, you know, where the headphones and get a deeper exploration of it. So that's definitely on my list. Roy, remember he he's the one who has all of the articles in Quilter's newsletter magazine for years. Anyway, that's in Boston. Hopefully, if you're not in Boston, hopefully it's coming to Tennessee and other areas around the country and the globe. But stay tuned on that. I'm sure to take pictures. Let's see. So let's play with these a little bit more. What would it look like if we did, if we just alternated these? I don't know what I'm going to use these for. I'm just playing right now. I'm celebrating that our quilt is done. Let's just see. What if we put four of these together? Can you see that? There we have a four patch. Then what happens if we... Let's put that aside. Ah, can you see that? That's fun. Create the pinwheel. The white and red. What if we did it this way? We could create... Ooh, I'm liking that. The yellow pinwheel. Ooh, look at that. 
Let's make a few of those. What is just fascinating to me is the combinations and the math behind quilts. Or just, ooh, look at the difference in size there. I don't know if you can see that. Hmm. Hang on. Um, there have to be, I'm sure the mathematicians out there would, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of combinations. If you figure, think of the March Madness and, that's better, and Warren Buffett offering a billion dollars to anyone who can guess all of the March Madness winners. And the odds of doing that are one in many, many, many million. And, you know, you just look at the way you can combine just these, just these patches that we made, and the, uh, the options are many. So that's my long way of saying if you want to redesign this quilt and use what you've made to turn it into something else, go for it. And I know you would anyway. Let's see. So I'm going to make another pinwheel. Can you see how that's popping out? Just webbing these together. one leader ender and then sew them both together. So there's one star. There's another star. We'll just sew these together and then we'll take a look at what we've done tonight. Okay, so here are two random stars that we made from leftovers. Oh, there's that. Again, I set the scene. Then press down. Don't stretch. Is that fun? There we go. We can put those together. Just another thing to do with some of the squares that we made on the mystery quilt. So we've been at it for 60 minutes. We have done one of each of the, the squares. Keep on sewing them. I hope you are trucking along. 
send me email, let me know how it's going. Um, let me make sure to catch you all if there's anyone else out there. Just want to make sure I say hi. I so enjoy seeing, oh, I see more people out here. Joyce. Uh, Joyce has had a busy week. While watching tonight, she's just getting around to cutting dog ears off and doing some scant trimming on her last batch of three and a half inch blocks. I hear you. Your quilt is so pretty, can't wait to see what mine ends up looking like. It may end up coming to the getaway to be worked on. Oh, fun, Joyce. It'll be beautiful. I hope you can take some time just to rest this weekend. I know what you mean with spring coming. It's, it's like the frenzy's beginning. I'm getting ready. I've seen pansies. And you know what that means. Now it's the race is on to plant. Ah, Sandra. Oh, I'm so glad I checked this before signing out. She asks, where are we going on our retreat? I, we are going to Bradford, New Hampshire. It is a, a little bed and breakfast that we've been at. I think this is our third year. Uh, Leslie is the proprietor. It's up uh, Rosewood Country Inn. And there are 13 of us going. And she opens up her dining room and we just quilt there. And there are a couple of stores around, of course. Let's see. So that's where we'll be. Deb, hi Deb. Welcome. She says the quilt is beautiful. Joining live but not sewing tonight. Watching you in the Providence College basketball game. We'll sew this week and hope to make good progress. Go Friars. Good luck. March Madness is upon us. I wonder who they're playing. Oh. Bob, in fact, in our poll, he wanted Providence. He said they're pretty good. All I know is I picked Harvard, and they won today, and they weren't supposed to win. So I told them I just contributed my point. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, hi, Deb. Hi, Kevin, if you're there. Sheila again. Yes, Bonnie is at the Mountain Quilt Fest 2014 in Pigeon Forge. I had to work and could not attend. Oh, Sheila. Of course, that's where she is. Haven't, hasn't it been fun to see her pictures? I love to hear all about her, where she goes. It sounded like the facility was very nice there. And finally, Laura. This is so fun. Thank you all. Beautiful quilt. She's been saving the clues but haven't started it yet. Brave woman designing as you went. Great job. Laura in Indiana. Thank you, Laura. Um, thanks for putting up with me. As I say, it constrained the designing process a bit, and next time I probably will do more of it before we get into it. But uh, I hope fun was had by all. This is our daffodil and crocus quilt. And until next week, I'll try to catch you from the retreat. If not, I'll post online, and for sure the Friday after, I'll see you right back here on Fibercast. Have a good week. Bye. I have to find out how to turn it off. Bye, everyone.